Hey guys, this is Veron from Secret of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. Whew, this may be the third time I had to record this today, mainly because I've been messing up the audio recording a lot. I'll talk about that later. But for now, I'd like to introduce you to the most anticipated slash teased video of my channel, I guess. <laughs> it was somewhat unintentional. I kept on mentioning it because I was working it working on it Simon simultaneously with other projects and drawings so I'd mention it because I'd think that hey maybe I might, I might finish it this month or next week that didn't happen for a long time so it's gonna be in my vid it was in my videos for quite some time just mentioning it here and there and I'm finally free from the curse I, I don't know <laughs> so as the title says we are joining Caster Merlin from Fate Grand Order, and this was supposed to be my catalyst for him when he dropped for the second time on the North American server. So, this was around September, October ish. I remember starting this file a little bit before he dropped so that I had the catalyst by the time his banner came around, but that did not exactly happen. It didn't happen for a long time, actually. So, yeah, if you're not, if you're not familiar with Fate Grand Order, just go ahead and watch anyway. It's a pretty fun video, I think. Um, I, I guess it's fun for me because I learned a lot. And it's a bit less rushed in terms of the production, I guess, compared to my other drawings. There's a lot more detailed. Com it's a lot more detailed compared to my other digital art. So, yeah, just watch on ahead, I guess. So, right. Fake Grand Order. Your... One of the most popular gacha games, I think. I mean, it was really talked about in JP a lot. It's it has a good ground here in NA. If you watch anime, somewhat a lot. Well, not a lot. I guess if you watch anime, you'd have heard of Fate in some way somehow. This is the gacha mobile game of it, and yeah, I'm in this hell. <laughs> I've done a lot of fan art for the game actually. So the Night of the Round Table. Um, Arthur, Ereshigal, Karna, and now Merlin. I drew stuff for them here and there. I try not to flood it my art too much with fan art, but yeah. So this was this was supposed to be my cutters for Merlin, and when he first when he when he first came around, I didn't do anything for it. I saved up a little bit of quartz, maybe around a hundred fifty ish at most. Um, didn't get him. That was around the Babylonia camp. Uh, it was after the Babylonia singularity, I think, or somewhere in between. Uh, didn't get him. I threw like 1,400 pesos on it, I think. So he was the first character that I actually spent money for. When I realized that I wasn't gonna get him, I stopped there. I didn't spend any more, and I just decided I would save up from then on as much as possible to get him, which was a better strategy, strategy <laughs> which is a better strategy. I did get him, but he did decimate me down to a hundred something quarts. Ugh. So in a road for Merlin I had around three hundred to four hundred SQ and a couple of tickets here and there. Yeah. He decimated me down to around hundred and fifty. 160, 70, around that, or maybe 190, I don't really remember anymore. But yeah, it took a couple of rolls to get him. <sighs> but I'm glad he did. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with gacha game culture and communities around it, especially for Fate actually, um, people or artists in particular would draw catalysts for them in hopes that that would entice the character to come to their game and you'd have the character. Of course, it's all just superstition, but it's pretty fun to do. I mean, it gives you an excuse to draw fan art and <laughs> also hope against hope that you'd get the character. Yeah, it's, it's just fun. I mean, I don't always get to draw fan art before. I mean, I used to not to do I used to not do a lot of fan art, but every some chance that I get, I would try to draw some. Right. So this is going to be a long video. It's 31 minutes long. That's the best I could do 
after all, I did end up with 19 hours of footage. So I tried to compress it as much as possible. I tried to cut out all the more repetitive or boring parts. Um, I sped it up a lot. So rest assured, I don't draw and move this fast in real life. If you watch any of my streams on Twitch or Picard or even, I don't really stream on on Picardo anymore, but if you watched me live, you'd see how slow I actually am. I do cut out a lot of the more Control Z mania happening. <laughs> and yeah, it's just super sped up because I sped up the original clips so that I could edit a lot faster. And then I grouped those up and then sped that group a lot more. And comp you know, it, it just compressed and compressed. I don't really know. How fast this is going but I'm definitely not this fast in real life <laughs> but I had fun um, I guess let's talk about the process and what took me so long to finish it so I did start it on September 22 and I did end in, in December 31 so it did take me four months to finish it uh, what kind of blindsided me was the amount of work and detail there was on Merlin himself so the background, the mountain, and the snowy thing, that was pretty fast since I did do some digital art before I did this piece and that piece also involved some mountains and since it's not super detailed background work, I did it pretty quickly. It was Merlin himself. The line art was kind of decently fast. I had a lot of layers just to incorporate all of his little things and thing about mobs here and there. It was the amount of stuff. Like I knew based on his sprite and his card art that there's a lot of stuff on him, especially for the third ascension. I didn't expect how long it would take when you're actually the one drawing it. I guess if you're more professional you'd speed up a lot, you know how to combine certain layers, blah blah blah. But I'm not a professional. I haven't drawn dig digitally for quite a bit. I mean, I do here and there, but it's no longer my main medium, so I'm pretty slow with it now. I'm still kind of surprised by how long it took. So 19 hours is a lot. I mean, it's sure it's raw footage, you saw all of the Google and Pinterest stuff on that raw file, but 19 hours just to draw is a lot because I'm impatient. Back in college, I could finish a digital piece in... 3 to 5 hours of drawing and then I stop, I switch to watercolor is my medium. I still do stuff pretty quickly there. Uh, I could finish a piece in a day if it's a bit simpler or more, fo more focused on the character. Uh, but 19 hours, like I know to professionals or really experienced digital artists, 19 hours is nothing. Like that's noob stuff. It's not even like in 19 hours, you, you probably could draw an entire building if you're, a, if you're a pro, but I'm no pro, I'm just an amateur artist drawing digitally who just happens to draw digital and who happens to know how to draw digital even though it's no longer her main medium. <sighs> Why did they even switch out? Oh, because what I got is right. <laughs> okay, so background info. Uh, somewhere in second year college, so that's around 2011, I think. Man, I'm dating myself. Around 2011-ish, um, I got the tablet, so I started practicing with that. I fell in love with it. I drew a lot of art just digitally, and I did a lot of pieces just digitally. Like you saw, if you saw my David art account. There was just, was just a time period from where I switched from watercolor pencils to digital art and then suddenly it switched to watercolor and when I discovered watercolor and the techniques and how to use it, I kind of fell in love with it so I forgot about digital art for such a long time that up to the point I got super rusty and I just do stuff slowly now. I guess the trade-off is that I'm a lot more deliberate and careful with it since I'm not rushing to finish anything or you know I'm not skimping out on processes. The stuff that I make now is a little bit more refined than what I used to work on but that's a discussion for another time. Right. 
Yeah. So I did do line art first. I was expecting to use the line art originally, but when I realized there was so much detail, I felt like it added too much weight to the drawing. So I opted to use it as just a guide for a lineless drawing. And of course, lineless drawings take a lot of time and a lot of tweaking. So I guess that's what contributed to the 19 hours. Another thing that took a long time was that I came back to the piece a lot and added more shadows, put in overlays and highlights and you know, fixing little stuff, kind of nitpicking a little bit. Mm. The, the background and the staff also kind of caught me by surprise. Like the staff I knew was detailed but I didn't think it would take that long. And then I kind of skimmed out on the floor, Flora stuff in the end, but it's fine. It it kind of worked out since I didn't want it to catch too much attention from Merlin anyway. So the concept here was that I wanted to draw Merlin on a snowy mountain because Caldea, as of when I drew this actually was we thought that it was on a mountain in like I don't know Mount Everest or some stuff like that. It was on a very high snowy mountain. And there is nothing around you except snow and mountains. Of course, with the opening of Lost Belt, we kind of definitely know where we are by now, but I won't say anything for anyone who hasn't reached Lost Belt yet. I mean, if you know, if you, yeah, never. It still applies whether or not you played Lost Belt. It's still snowy mountains. So the concept was that I wanted to draw Berlin in the snowy mountain range. Because that's where Caldea was, and I wanted to draw flowers around him because he's the major flowers, and maybe that would like be the scene that you see when he arrives in your game. <laughs> yeah, it's a little cheesy, I know. But man, I'm really hoarse if you haven't noticed compared to my other videos where I talk, I, I sound really hoarse. This is like the third time I've tried to record this video in the day. The first thing that happened was that I kind of messed up when I was editing the audio. So I usually apply stuff like noise reduction and um, equalization to the voiceover, but I accidentally overwrote the recording to an earlier state where there was it wasn't complete. It was like only five minutes worth of voiceover. So that messed up. And then I did one just a couple of minutes ago, and I realized that the audio recording was really bad. Uh, apparently, there was something wrong with the setting, so here I am on my third attempt. My voice is hoarse, I don't remember half the stuff I said in the earlier two recordings, but you know, power through. <laughs> so, this is a long video, so I might leave you every now and then with just music if I have nothing interesting to talk about. Um, if I don't end up doing that, then yeah. <laughs> so I would suggest that maybe you can watch this while you're drawing yourself, or if you're doing something like chores, or maybe you're on a commute somewhere. This is gonna be a little chill, just me blabbering about Merlin, the game, and art. I suppose? I mean, that's what this channel is. Just me blabbering about art. So what I first did actually is that I wanted to render the skin first, just to, you know, so that I don't feel, so that I don't go crazy, just keep on rendering when I get to that stage. So I did the skin first so that I had something to finish, or somewhat finish for then. 
and then when I started getting to the more detailed stuff like you know his robe and the ruffles on his robe and his sash I decided to go with the flats first so that I could get the colors down properly and yeah it was a lot it was seriously a lot I ended up with a lot of the ears just from uh, the, the base itself like all the mountains and the base colors was already a lot but when you already add all the overlays and the layer effects it really bugged Clips to do paint down. At towards the end, somewhat, um, my file started to save a lot slower. Um, zooming out was a lot slower. So, yeah. I'm glad Photoshop managed to handle it. I'm glad it didn't crash. But still, it, it became a hefty file. <laughs> So one thing I didn't really show properly in this video, but it was a technique that I did a lot on this video, was that I started using the grayscale filter a lot more. And that's something a lot of artists, especially professionals, do. So they would usually paint in grayscale and then add the color on top of it later on. So that would make sure that your values and highlights are all, you know, properly done. Um, you don't have anything in a weird mid-tone range. But because I really kind of don't really like working in grey, I tweaked that process a little bit and I'm still coloring in color, but I turn on the filter, check if the values and the depths are where I want them to be, and tweak that based on what I see on the filter. At least with the filter, I can just turn it on and off again when I need it. Of course, it does add a bit more time and process, but for me, that's what works right now. The process could change in the future. But it was definitely a very valuable tool because one of my weaknesses that was pointed out to me by one of my friends was that I would tend to work in really light shadows and things tend to blend together. So it's always like this weird mid-tone. So I don't really have any harsh, hard, defining shadows. And that's something I tried to tackle with this Merlin piece. Um, it worked quite a bit. I still have a lot I could work on. I feel like some stuff are still a little bit too... maybe too saturated or maybe it's just not deep enough. So that could still be worked out. But for now, it's quite, a bit, quite an achievement compared to like Compass or Arthur where the colors are a little slightly more mid-toned over there. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about this recording style. So if you know my older videos or you've watched my older digital art videos, you'd know that I would usually record the screen that I'm working on. So you see the entire program, the desktop, all of the brush strokes actually is the more important part there. And of course when it's sped up because I tend to jump around on the piece, it gets a little bit dizzying. But the advantage is that you see my brush strokes, what tool I'm using, what layer I'm, what layer effect I'm using, and all of that. The difference with this recording this time was that I had a new, I, I had a new view on a different window, put it on a different screen, and had my broadcaster record that screen instead. So. You don't see my brush strokes, but you see, uh, I guess, more of the bigger picture. And also the progression is a lot easier to follow because I'm not jumping around and zooming in and out. Personally, I like this view more because it's a bit easier to edit. It's not as dizzying as the other one, but 
actually do kind of miss seeing the brush strokes. But when it's sped up, you actually kind of do see the brush strokes somewhat, but it's not as detailed and, you know, it, it doesn't feel like you're the one drawing it. So let me know if you like the this one, this current one, where you actually see the bigger picture, or would you rather see the live in action brush strokes type of view? Or if it doesn't matter, then it doesn't matter, I guess. The only difficulty I had with this particular recording style was that I had to remember to actually zoom in and out on the other screen. So sometimes, because I jump around all over the place, uh, I forget to bring my live stream thing with me. So sometimes you're just staring at something that isn't moving for a couple of minutes, and I realize like, hey, I'm not working on the same area. Whoops. <laughs> but th that's something I can train myself to get used to, I guess. Notice by now, I spend a lot of time on his hair because he's so fluffy and he's, he has a ton of hair. I feel like it was important to work on it properly. So the longer part at the back, I didn't really work on that a lot, especially because it blended in a little bit with his rope. But the top part, I spent a lot of time on it. It it turned out in the end, but man. <laughs> So at this point between that last section with the hair and the staff, I took a little bit of a break working on it, mainly because the staff was another big thing to tackle. So when I started doing the sketch and the draft for the staff itself, I realized how much things there was on it and how kind of complicated it was. Also at the same time when I was drawing this, the Babylonia anime season 1 actually was still running. So season two out right now, I should watch the latest episode, but I saw a lot of more angles of the staff and I realized that the top part where the gold 
thing is <laughs> isn't really what how how I thought it was. I thought it was like a solid plate or something, or a solid like cone, but that wasn't really the case. But at the point where I saw that, <laughs> I already did too much, and I didn't want to edit it anymore. So it's fine. Artistic liberties, I guess. <laughs> Also, at first, I was kind of worried that I made the wood part a little bit too gnarly and twisted. I thought that maybe it would be maybe too sinister looking, and then maybe it would compete too much with Merlin in terms of detail. I'm glad that it didn't turn out that way, since it did create a bit of mo a more realistic vibe to his staff. Like he actually got it from a tree or something. And yeah. It, it turned out well. I, I like how the staff turned out. Usually I do vectors when I do weapons, just so that I get perfect straight lines and I get the proportions right. But since I'm not, I'm probably not going to be drawing the staff again in the near future or where I need to need to keep on using it, um, drawing it in Clips Digi was fine. It was a valuable experience also. It looks a little bit more integrated with everything else compared to when I use a vector that looks so straight and perfect. So right now we're gonna be working in the background or the foreground, I guess. This is supposed to be the flowers they wanted to have surrounding Merlin. Um, I wanted to do something pretty detailed at first. I decided to dial down what I was doing, and I did make two detailed flowers, and then skimped out on, out on the rest because I felt like if I did something super detailed for everything, um, I might just never finish the piece. Number two was that I, it might compete again with Merlin because it's also very detailed and bright and colorful. It might take too much attention, so I just opted to leave the two flowers over there to maybe act as a foreground and then have the rest be more abstract looking.
So we're gonna actually jump into Photoshop to do the final touches, mainly the blurring of the background and the flowers. Um, Clip Studio Paint has a really decent um, blurring tool. I just don't like the particular way it blurs. So I'm jumping into Photoshop to use the Gaussian Blur filter and I'm also doing a little bit of final overlays and touch-ups and we'll almost be done with the piece. If you enjoyed that, I hope you did. Consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. I do a lot of kind of anime-ish content in the way that I do fan art. My art style, of, my art style itself is pretty anime based. I do watercolors, I do digital art, sometimes colored pencils as well. So if, in, if you're interested in that, please do check out my channel. And yeah, we're finally done. <laughs> Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or DeviantArt to see more. And I will see you around.